sort of the November 27th meeting. We have no ANR, and we actually had hoped to spend the evening reviewing the draft prioritization plan with Central Mass Regional Planning for our complete streets program, but we haven't uh, heard from them yet, so we're hoping they're on the way up the stairs. Then after that, we'll have the town plan update, old new business, and then adjournment. So has everyone had a chance to uh, uh, review the minutes? If not, we have plenty of time to read them. <laughs> I can even read them out loud if you'd like. Any comments, questions, concerns? Motion to approve. Okay, I'll take a motion with Russ. Second? Second. Second, okay. All in favor? Very good. Okay. Sorry, John, I know you wanted to drag that out. <laughs> 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 All right, here we go. Okay. So I guess we'll move right on to the town planner update. Okay, I have only a couple little things for you. So on January 8th, the Open Space Committee will be coming to um, present the open space plan to the planning board. And we're um, also trying to get scheduled with the Board of Selectmen, maybe for the same meeting or the meeting after. But our plan was approved, finally. We had um, received it back and there were some modifications that they wanted. and. Um, kudos to Rebecca she was able to kind of go through a lot of it was moving things from one place in the book to the other but she got everything reorganized and we added a little data and sent it <coughs> in and that's been approved now so that will be valid for seven years so that is a good feeling to have that off of our desks and be approved and then on January 22nd at 6.30, we will be meeting with the Board of Selectmen to discuss the Route 15 study so that I can get some direction from all of you on which way I'm going with some zoning re revisions. And that will be taking place at the Board of Selectmen's meeting at Town Hall. And right now, Janae is saying we're on for, <coughs> excuse me, 6.30. Great. So, and other than that, I'm anxiously awaiting review of the complete streets prioritization plan. Yeah, so what's happened in it so far? There was a meeting to sort of identify yeah. different areas. Yeah, so I can um, kind of refresh everyone's memories on the actions that we've taken to date. Mm -hmm. So in, you'll recall in October of 2017, we drafted a complete streets policy and that was supported by the planning board and we brought that to the board of selectmen and on December 11th, 2017, that policy was approved by the Board of Selectmen. And we sent that in to MassDOT, and on March 1st, they approved our policy. When they approved our policy, that made us eligible for funding to create a, a Complete Streets prioritization plan. So in March, we, when we were notified that that was approved, we prepared the grant application and we sent that in and the funding for the prioritization plan was approved on September 18th and Central Mass Regional Planning Commission was the vendor we selected to work with. Uh, it was myself, Greg Morris, and Leon that discussed options for consultants and since CMRPC had been actively doing several of these plans for other communities, we thought it made sense to go with them. We were awarded a little over $15,000 to prepare this plan and in the months since we've signed, the contract was signed by the chair of the Board of Selectmen, we've been working with um, staff at Central Mass Regional Planning Commission. So myself, um, Kevin Filchak, Greg Morse, um, Ted Korzak, Kozak, our um, interim. We've all been, Rebecca sat in on one of the meetings. <coughs> we've all been meeting and talking about areas and trying to identify areas that were suitable for inclusion in the prioritization plan that were not state highways. And at the same time, we've been trying to identify even issues on the state highways that we would like addressed okay. so that we can include that list for MassDOT. And um, I was hoping Dan, who actually is just scheduled for 635, so maybe he's just tied up in traffic, oh. but I have not yet seen the final prioritization plan. Um, we did not receive a copy via email, and he was supposed to be bringing hard copies with him this evening. So I'm anxiously looking forward to seeing that and seeing what was identified. Great. 
Okay, and what would the next steps be? We'll review it and then what will happen. So this is the um, public comment period right now. So we would um, ideally take public comment from the Board of Selectmen, the Planning Board, and any interested members of the public. And then we would fine tune the plan based on that feedback and finalize the plan. And then it would come back to the Planning Board for adoption. It's, um, it's kind of odd that the Board of Selectmen had to approve the policy, but the Planning Board actually has to adopt the prioritization oh, the plan. plan. Oh, right. So we'd schedule a public hearing then for it? Yes. Yeah, I believe it has to be an advertised public hearing. I could be wrong, but I would assume. It'd be good to get as much public right, input exactly. as Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. And so our goal was to have this plan finished um, the end of February. So I think that will depend on the outcome of this evening, right, right. <laughs> maybe. So um, if for whatever reason uh, Mr. Daniska is delayed, I think the earliest we would revisit this would maybe be the January 8th meeting. Okay, good, very good. Okay, any questions on the process or where we are? Good. Okay, so maybe we'll go to old business then to fill some time. Russ, any old business? No? Okay, that's all right. Jim? Um, I just had a question about the Route 15 study. Mm -hmm. um, as I read this, it looks to me like we're going to be rezoning Route 15 based on that study. Does it make more sense to do that in mass now or? Are we better off waiting to see what businesses we want to move in and be able to focus on that business's needs when we uh, resume parcels there? Well, I, I think that my opinion anyway is if, if there's some, not something done with the zoning, you won't even attract somebody to be interested. So we've had, as you know, many interested parties over the years for a variety of things that were not permitted under the current zoning. So I really think what we need to do is the Planning Board and the Board of Selectmen and myself and uh, the Town Administrator and uh, Economic Development Tourism Coordinator kind of sit down in one room together and, you know, there were three options spelled out in the plan, I believe, or three potential directions to go with the zoning. I'd like us to hone in on one and then I can draft some changes and then we can work as a group to kind of refine that and go forward and see what makes sense for the corridor. I think the idea of... Um, you know, zoning for a particular business doesn't always work. As you know, you know, you really have to, when you're rezoning, you have to know that you're comfortable with the zone for the land, no matter who that business is or what that business is. Whatever's permitted in that zone ultimately could go in there. So I think we need to approach it on a more broad base than that. Yeah. I think, I think you know, although I think the current zoning and the PUBD was well-intentioned, it really hasn't, you know, worked very well. Mm -hmm. I, I think... One of the biggest problems was that the overall amount of land available you know, wasn't really big enough to be able to, you know, take advantage of all the different options that were in there. So, and I, I think a lot of questions came up even on the, you know, the study that we got from CMRPC that, you know, maybe they hadn't hit on all the things we'd like to talk about. So I think it'll be a good discussion. But I do think Gene is right that we need to come up with um, some better zoning for down there, and, mm -hmm. and, and I think we'll be able to do that. Good. So, do you have any old business or? No, I don't. Okay. Mike? Okay. I do not either, no. Okay. I, I went to the um, ribbon cutting at the, uh, what is it, the oh, dog? No. The Boss Plaza. Boss Plaza. Boss Plaza. It was very nice, but unfortunately, um, <coughs> it hadn't been that really far along on the project itself. I mean, I, I don't know if anyone else went, but no. um, you could get a concept of what was there, but th there wasn't much finished. And, oh, and really? I think it's unfortunate in a way because it really was well attended. I mean, there were what, 50 people there or so? Everyone had a dog, maybe more than that. I mean, they were really excited about getting there. But, like, you'd go upstairs, and they had these little areas that were kind of sheetrocked off, and it would say, with a little, you know, tag, it would say, you know, boarding room or something like that. But you couldn't tell what, what it really was. So it, it's unfortunate, you know, they, they probably wanted to get the word out, but mm -hmm. uh, it would have been nicer to really, you know, see that it was closer to being ready to um, be used. So hopefully, I don't know what the, if anyone has any idea on what the new date is, but it looks like they got some still some work to do. Do you have any information on that? No, nothing new on that. No. Okay. okay, great. Any new business, uh, Russ? <laughs> Usually you have some. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, think about where you traveled the last week. Anything come up in your mind or anything? Thank you, son. All right. Jim? Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Nothing? <coughs> Nothing as well. Okay. I guess old business, the public house came out 
Didn't it? Beautiful. Fantastic. Yeah, that was really great. They did a beautiful job. Yep. Yeah, it looks great. They did a nice job. So. I have, I guess, one little thing that I could bring up. I don't have a lot of information about it, and I won't give you a location or names of people because they're still negotiating, but um, just something to think about. We have a party that's interested in doing an escape room business in town, and I don't know if you know what that is, but you, um, escape rooms can be used for just purely entertainment or for team building, and you basically go and you're locked in a room and you have to solve puzzles to be able to escape out of this escape room. So um, we've been looking at the zoning and determined that it's a use that would be allowed in commercial under commercial amusement recreation. And so they are looking at um, a couple of different locations and will likely be before us if negotiations go well. But I guess it's, um, you know, I have, I've never been in one and I don't think I would want to because being locked in a room is probably not something that I would like, like to fun. do. Yeah. But I, you know, I've done a little bit of research online and it seems like it's a kind of a very popular, very popular activity yeah. where you go with a group of friends. Um, she told me anywhere from uh, two to 10 people, depending on the size of the room and the complexity of the puzzle. So um, stay tuned. I think it's something we might see more of. I think, you know, I think it also gives, you know, another option for adults to do things in the evening with their friends, you know, something to get together and do. So um, Kevin was very familiar with escape rooms when we talked about it. So um, interesting. Yeah. And so, okay. you know, so that kind of brings me back to, you know, when we talk about the bylaw and when, say, for instance, you're doing a definition, you notice the last set of revisions, we started to say uses such as, because you can't really predict oh, what like the that. use never is, know right, like who would have written escape room. I, so I look at, you know, rock climbing walls we didn't even have in there, you know, maybe eight, nine, ten years ago, and now it's escape rooms, so... I don't know, probably be some virtual reality stuff next. I'm not sure. But interesting. It was interesting. So we shall see. Maybe we could do a meeting there once it opens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could do team building for board members, yeah, you know. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. um, well, could I just take a little break and I'll go see if I can yeah, find we'll anything Yeah, we'll give it a few more minutes and, and see, you know. Let's yeah. see what I can find out. And then we'll just have to call it a night, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think if they're not here and they haven't called. Yeah, you'd think they'd be trying to call. Yeah. Yeah, it's not looking too good for them. <laughs> Unless they're standing over by the town hall outside wondering why we're not there. Pretty. I think we had our meeting here, though, yeah, with him, you. the kickoff meeting. I think he had a sick child last week, so hope everything's okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you'd hope they'd have some kind of, you know, coverage on it that somebody would have gotten back to us. Yeah. Do you think that it can be heard from there? Do you want to use oh, the yeah. thing just yeah. in case? Here or here? Either way, yes. No, yeah. yeah. I'll be more comfortable. Yeah. I'm Mike Supernat. I'm on the board of selectmen. Uh, as such, uh, I'm uh, on the uh, MPO, which is the the organization uh, in Central Massachusetts that uh, that that uh, works on uh, transportation related. Uh, uh, funding and transportation relating plans and uh, the MPO is uh, working on the long range transportation plan uh, they this ha is updated every four <coughs> years and this happens to be a year it's being updated uh, a month ago we uh, 
released for public comment the uh, the element that's the uh, bicycle plan, and that's on CMRPC's website. And if, if anybody wants to go there and look at it and have any comments, uh, we, it was open for comments a month ago. And at the most recent meeting, we opened the uh, pedestrian plan, and I think that's up there on the website ready for comments. So or if it isn't, it will be within the next few days. Great. So the regional uh, pedestrian plan. And each town has a map showing the, uh, the plan. So you can go to the, like the Sturbridge uh, uh, section, take a look at it, or if there's any other towns in Central Mass you're interested in, you can look at it and see see if you have any comments or anything. Oh, that's great. Sounds so good. You, Very helpful. So it, it's, it's on the CMRPC website. Good. That's great, Mike. We appreciate that. Thank you. I just, uh, I don't know if, uh, you know, they've held uh, meetings uh, to try to get the, uh, get input. And uh, so, you know, I, I think they probably uh, would would be better off just coming to a planning board meeting to try to get input and, mm -hmm. uh, because some there's a huge uh, very large uh, outreach program that they have and they they try to uh, contact uh, everything from seniors to uh, disadvantaged uh, uh, communities mm -hmm. and, and, and so forth but uh, the, there's not a real you know, a, plan, a local planning board be a, would be a traditional stakeholder, and they don't really, uh, you know, come to planning board meetings right. and, and do any presentations and so forth. And, uh, but, uh, you know, it, it is on a website. It is what it is for now. And, you know, perhaps uh, if, if uh, in the next time around, if we can have a little bit more outreach to the local planning boards, I think it would be yeah, helpful. Yeah, I think it would be very helpful. Yeah. That's a good point. So. Great. Okay. Um, I had something I could also bring up as sort of an update. Uh, it's of regional importance, I think, but I, I was going to wait till Jean got back, but um, I can start talking about it now, I guess. Um, I, I don't know if you've heard of the East-West High Speed Rail Study. Um, this is a, uh, a plan that would create high speed rail between, you know, Worcester and Springfield. And the Mass DOT uh, set up um, some funding over a million dollars to hire they actually hired three consultants and they're going to spend the next 12 to 18 months um, reviewing uh, the options that exist for that what kind of ridership they'd be what kind of cost there would be and one of the interesting things is that um, one of the components of it is a passenger rail stop in Palmer and so obviously the people in Palmer and surrounding areas are very interested in making sure that that passenger rail stop in Palmer um, remains in the plan. Uh, so there is a kickoff meeting on December 18th of an advisory uh, committee, which you know, I, I've been appointed to as part of uh, as my role as the town you know, manager in Palmer. But there are 33 people, including the mayor of Springfield, Richie Neal, uh, the city manager of Worcester and so forth, that are sort of uh, going to be an advisory board for that over the next period of time. And in Palmer, we've, uh, the town council has appointed a 13-member advisory board to try to promote the passenger, you know, uh, stop in Palmer. So um, I, I think that some uh, invitations did go out as far as uh, surrounding communities. I know we did get one applicant from Sturbridge to be on that committee sheet. Didn't happen to be selected. There were others. but So it is a regional thing. We certainly want to find out what kind of interest there is. Uh, one of the, I think, key components for a real stop there would be that there are enough people who would like to, you know, gain access to the system to, to drive, uh, to use the train to go between Boston and Spring for, from there, and then also use that as a point of, uh, you know, departure to get to the colleges and so forth. So uh, it should be very interesting, and uh, there seems to be quite a commitment on the part of the state to do a really uh, thorough study on the feasibility of this high speed rail. Very good. So I guess with that, we ought to adjourn. I um, left a message at the office. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a cell phone. I have a cell phone number for another employee at CMRPC. I contacted her in the hope she would have his cell phone, and I got her voicemail. So she's probably working at another meeting as well. So 
sorry about that. I um completely blindsided by this as we were just... Oh, I know you made quite an effort to reach out even We did, and we were just talking today. yesterday, and he, in fact, sent the map, and um, I'm sorry, I'm not sure what happened. We'll follow up and uh, try to get that rescheduled. Yeah, I mean, we could talk about the map, but it's sort of self-explanatory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. If you read the uh, little right. schematic here, tell yeah. me what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, so with that, and unless there's anything else, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Well, second. All in favor? Okay. Uh, well, thanks to all of you for coming. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry. You want these back for the next meeting? No. I've asked him to make hard copies of everything, so. Okay. Mm. Well, assuming, you know, if we get the you know, plan soon, at least we'll be able to read it and right. have some ideas. Before. Yeah, exactly.